Hello developers and architects. Let's continue our theme from last week talking about databases. If you're building applications on Cloudflare, what do you do if you want to connect to an external relational database? Of course, with Cloudflare, you can get a SQL-like database running alongside your workers with the D1 database service. But what about if you want something bigger? Or maybe you've got an existing database that you want to connect to from inside the Cloudflare product. This can be a problem with many functions as a service products because your functions are going to scale out massively all creating their own connection back to your database. And I've been there, believe me, where my database has simply just run out of connections and crashed and burned. It's not a pretty place to be, believe me. This gets even more challenging when you're building with Cloudflare though, because instead of having fixed regions, your region in Cloudflare is the entire world. 140 edge locations all over the globe. Whereas your database is probably sitting in some kind of fixed data center or fixed cloud region. And that's what I want to show you in this video, how you can use the Cloudflare Hyperdrive product to simplify and speed up the connections from your applications running in Cloudflare workers back to your relational databases. And we're going to do all of that in Rust. Exciting, huh? Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about databases. You want to connect your Cloudflare worker to a Postgres database. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, using Wasm to compile your Rust application does cause a couple of challenges because remember, now you're running inside the browser. So you're going to need some specific crates to make this work. Now, for the purpose of this demo, the actual user authentication database, the user management, the password store, all of that has been moved into its own backend service, a completely separate worker called the authentication worker. And all of the logic to connect to the database has been shifted into here. So this now uses Postgres. If you're interested, it uses Neon, which is a really cool serverless database provider. I would highly recommend checking out Neon. If you are building serverless applications, you need a relational database. So the crates you will need, you will need this Tokyo Postgres crate, and you will need to make sure you enable the JS feature. This is what's going to allow you to connect to a database using a Rust application that's compiled to Wasm. Now, because of the way Wasm works, when you actually connect to the database, you're going to need to do it a little bit weirder than you're typically used to. You're actually going to need to create this socket connection directly. So here, I'm getting the host and the port of the connection, and I'm actually going to create a socket and then create a raw connection from my running application to the database itself. So this is a little bit more involved than just creating a database connection and off you go, you're connected to Postgres. So this will look a little bit weird as you're looking at it, but it works perfectly. Believe me, it all is okay. The other thing that happens here is that the actual connection to the database is spawned onto a background thread. This Wasm bind gen futures translates a Rust future to a JavaScript promise. So this is going to be running in the background. The connection to the database is set up in the background. So let's talk about actually connecting to the database now. And before we talk about the Hyperdrive product, which is a really cool service from Cloudflare that really speeds up, caches, simplifies a whole bunch of stuff to do with database connections. The first thing I want to do is demonstrate this actually connecting directly to a Postgres database. In this case, a Postgres database running on Neon. So I'm going to read a secret value from my worker called db connection string. This is just going to be the complete string of the Postgres connection. And then if my db connection string secret is set, I'm going to create the config of my database using that db connection string. So I'm going to create some config from a string, in this case, like I say, a full Postgres connection string. Then I can extract the host and the port, and I'm going to return that host and port back to be used with the socket connection and with the actual client connection. So this is the simplest way to do things. I've got a connection string. I'm just going to use that connection string and connect to the database. Inside the actual Cloudflare UI, I have got my authentication worker, and you see I've got the DB connection string set there. Of course, I'm not going to show you that. The other thing I've done, I've actually exposed the authentication endpoint on the public internet. And this is actually a really cool feature of Cloudflare. Inside your Wrangler.toml, if you set this workers dev equal false, this will mean that this worker can only be accessed through a binding, which means it can only be accessed from the front-end application running on Cloudflare pages. Now, 
for the purposes of demonstrating the performance and the speed of connecting to a database, I've actually manually turned on this connection. So I can actually make a call directly to this worker from Postman. So here I am inside Postman, and you'll see I'm making this POST request to authentication, jameseasternworkers.dev. If I hit that send request, this is going to do try and log me in. And that took 1.4 seconds to respond. Remember, this is going directly to Neon. If I hit this a few more times, it will probably get a little bit quicker. 500, 600 milliseconds is about the average I've seen in this really, really experimental, really well-structured test. Not really, but you get the idea. 500, 600 milliseconds is about what you're going to expect connecting directly to a Postgres database, in this case, a Neon Postgres database. So that's doing things with a direct connection. Can you make this more performant? And I mean, 500, 600 milliseconds for a serverless function connecting to a relational database is pretty damn performant. Can we make it better though? And that's where the Cloudflare Hyperdrive product comes in. So you can think of Hyperdrive as a cache slash proxy slash connection pool slash piece of amazing technology for your databases. Taken directly from the docs, as you can see, it turns your existing regional database into a globally distributed database. You can create a Hyperdrive connection, pass in your actual underlying connection string, and then you bind Hyperdrive to your worker inside your worker that gives you a Postgres connection string, but instead of connecting directly to your database, you are connecting to Hyperdrive. The other really cool thing with Hyperdrive that was announced in Cloudflare Birthday Week 2024 is this ability to connect to private databases from workers. You can, comp you can combine Hyperdrive with the Cloudflare tunnel to actually create a connection from your workers to a database running inside a data center. You can do that completely securely. A really, really cool way to both connect to your relational databases inside VPC, but also do that in an incredibly performant way. But for this video, we're going to use Neon. We're going to stick with that publicly available Neon database, and we're going to use that, and we're going to enable Hyperdrive. One of the other things Hyperdrive does is it actually caches queries. So if, if it sees the same query happening over and over again, it's actually going to cache that in its globally distributed cache, which means that it's both going to protect your database, but also mean that you're going to get much more performant response times. So how does all of this work? Well, Hyperdrive is supported inside the Cloudflare Terraform provider. So inside your application code, if you go and have a look at the infra folder and main.tf, you'll see you're creating this Cloudflare Hyperdrive config passing in a set of variables for the database, the password, the host, the user, the port, all of the stuff you would expect for creating a connection to a database. Of course, all of this has been pulled from Neon. From the Neon UI, you can get access to your connection string. When you actually go and run a Terraform apply, you will get back the ID of your Hyperdrive database. You can see I've got that there, the Hyperdrive ID. Much like almost any of these things you're going to connect to from your workers, you then need to create a binding inside your worker code. If you go into the authentication folder to the wrangler.toml, you will see there's this hyperdrive binding called DB, and I've got the ID that you've just seen from inside my Terraform apply. So now this authentication worker is bound to that hyperdrive connection. What this means inside the application code is that you can now access that hyperdrive binding. Remember to access a binding inside a worker, you do env dot whatever the thing is you're bound to. In this case, it's hyperdrive. And then the name of the binding that you configured in your wrangler.toml, which is called db. Now that I've got this hyperdrive struct, I can actually parse the connection string from hyperdrive and then grab the host and the port and the config, which can then be passed to the socket and the connection in the same way that you did for your manual database connection. So all that is changing is your connection string. Instead of connecting directly to Neon through a full connection string, you're connecting to a connection string provided by Hyperdrive. Here, hyperdrive.connectionstring.parse that as some Tokyo Postgres config. So from an application core perspective, that is all that is changing. Now, there's a couple of caveats with doing this, one of which being when you try and run your worker locally, you can't connect to Hyperdrive. It's a caveat of how Wrangler works. So for the minute, you need to override your connection string. You'll see inside my Hyperdrive binding here, I've overridden this local connection string property, and I'm going to connect to a local instance of Postgres. If you are following along or you want to run this locally, 
inside the readme file for this repository, there is a set of Docker run commands that will actually set up and configure a local Postgres instance for you. Once you have ran all of these commands and you see if I do a Docker PS, I've got a Postgres container running locally. If I go into the authentication folder and run npx wrangler dev, this is going to start up a local instance of my worker running on port 8787. And you'll see that the worker has access to the following bindings. So as far as my work is concerned, it is still using hyperdrive. It's just that the hyperdrive connection string has been overridden to be this local host URL configured here. So now that I've got the worker running locally, I can make a request to HTTP localhost. And I've now logged in using my local Postgres database. Fantastic. I can now test this locally. I can run this locally. I can try and create a new user locally. Okay, that user already exists. Let's try and create a different user. I can now do all of this stuff locally, all using Hyperdrive, remember. The local dev experience is fantastic. You just need to start up a Docker Postgres instance locally and make sure you configure the connection string inside your Wrangler.toml. So you've got that fantastic local developer experience that, to be honest, Cloudflare is really doing the best out of any cloud provider or SaaS provider that I've ever used. The local dev is a first-class citizen. So we've got that working perfect. What does this mean from a performance perspective? I know that's what you're all thinking. You want to see just how fast this can be. So I'm going to come back to the deployed instance of my authentication worker, and I'm going to delete that DB connection string. So now, so now this is going to use Hyperdrive. This is going to connect through Hyperdrive. And remember, previously we were looking at 500 to 600 milliseconds response time pretty consistently inside Postman. So I'm going to put that URL back. So this is going to hit that worker now, that freshly deployed version of the worker that is connecting through Hyperdrive, and I'm going to try and log in. That first request, 759 milliseconds, that is probably to be expected that that first initial connection, there still needs to be a socket connection set up. That is going to take a little bit longer. If I hit this now, though, consistently over and over again, you see I'm now getting response times in the 400 millisecond range. There's the odd one that tips over 500. But for the most part, it's in the low 400 millisecond response time. That's between a 100 and 200 millisecond performance improvement just from just from enabling Hyperdrive. Like I've not really needed to change any application code, and I just get this additional performance from for free. If we try the register endpoint as well, just to see how things differ, again, a 400 millisecond response time. This register endpoint works slightly differently because it actually needs to do a get and a post, but you're still getting sub 500 millisecond response times pretty consistently. Now, of course, for services like Neon, where they are auto scaling up and down, they can be accessed on a public URL connection string. This is less valuable. Although you get that 100, 200 millisecond performance improvement, you could theoretically connect directly to that Postgres database on Neon and you would still get 600 millisecond response times. Where this gets really powerful is with that ability to private tunnel to a private database. You've got a Postgres database running on RDS inside AWS, inside a VPC. It's an isolated subnet because you're following all the good best practices. You can use Hyperdrive combined with the Cloudflare tunnel to be able to query that on-premise database, that database inside a network, from your Cloudflare workers and do that in a performant way with the way that query caching works. Now, there's one last thing I just wanted to point out with how this application code works. And I want to give huge props to the team at Exograph for writing this incredible article because I was getting some really odd connection issues when I was first set this up because sometimes the connection would complete, sometimes the connection would just freeze, sometimes it just wouldn't respond, sometimes it would time out. I was getting some really odd connection issues. And this article talks about the extended query protocol. So the way the Tokyo Postgres connection works, if you're going to send a query request using the Tokyo Postgres crate, a few different things happen. When you run the query, there are three different things that need to happen. The first is a prepare request. When you're passing in parameters, the prepare request helps work out what types the parameters need to be then the actual execution runs, the actual running of the query, and then a close command runs. Now, because of the way Hyperdrive and Neon work, when you've got pooled connections enabled, all three of these things need to happen on the same connection. That is a source of complexity. Exagraph, call it out right here. And this article was incredibly useful because it gives you a solution to get around that. So if you're passing parameters 
into your queries and you're using Hyperdrive or really any Postgres backend that uses pooled connections, make sure you use this query typed function. When you actually use query typed, you still pass in your parameters, $1, $2, $3, when you actually specify the parameter value, you also need to specify the type that that parameter is. What that means from a functional perspective it th is that this prepare and close don't need to happen. All three steps can happen in a single network package. This was a fork of the Tokyo Postgres crate that has now been merged back into the main crate. Thank you again to the team at Exograph for making this really easy to find and really easy to do and you've now got this query typed parameter. So if you're using this crate, if you're connecting to a Postgres database from inside Cloudflare Workers, make sure you specify the types of your parameters. If you don't, you will get some weird connection issues and some weird timeouts. And that is really all there is to connecting your Rust applications running on Cloudflare Workers to a relational database. Whether that's going direct to the database using the database connection string, or using Hyperdrive to improve the performance, to reduce the load on your actual database itself, or to connect to a database running inside a private network on a cloud provider, or maybe in an on-premise data center. That's all for databases. I will see you all in the next video where you're going to learn all about queuing, something us Brits are incredibly good at. See you all there.